Hi guys, I'm Mike and welcome back to Ultimate Tech Hub. If your house was built in the last 10 or 12 years, there's a good chance you have a network box like this one. And it's probably located in your closet or our laundry room. Ours is in our master bedroom closet. Now the top half looks good, but the bottom half needs some serious attention. So today, I'm going to show you how to get these devices into this box and make everything look great. Now before we start, let's take a look at these devices and see what they do. And remember, hit subscribe, it's really important and it's free. So let's first start with the devices that we need to place in our network box. This is our wireless router from Linksys Routers. This is our 8 port gigabit switch from TP-Link. This is our 2 terabyte cloud storage from Western Digital. This is the Ring Elite Power Kit to power our Ring Elite doorbell. This is our modem which is just balancing on the edge of the network box. It's probably not too safe, so we will definitely need to secure it. This is the bracket that these devices will be attached to. Check your network box label to find the correct bracket. This bracket includes four plungers and four feet of Velcro straps. Here are the devices that are already installed in our network box. This is the Lutron Smart Bridge Pro, which controls Lutron dimmers and switches. Check out our video for installation and setup of these Lutron switches. This is the SmartThings hub that controls all the smart devices for your home. It's designed mainly for IoT devices. This is the Kivo Plus. This connects wirelessly to your Kivo lock, which can be opened with the Kivo app from anywhere in the world. Pretty cool. And lastly, this is our Ruckus ICX managed switch. And we have a PoE wireless access point connected to the Ruckus switch also. Right here, the blue connection. Okay, so let's get started. And remember to check the label on the network box. Use this information to find the correct bracket for the network box. This bracket is the Lagrand OnQ AC1040 that works for this particular networking box. Here is our link to the video that goes over the bracket in detail. Even though this is the bracket Lagrand makes for this box, the hole locations don't quite match up. So you may need to drill additional holes to fit your network box. I had to drill three holes in my network bracket to fit into the network box. I even had to drill into the existing holes so that the plunger anchors would fit. Place the plunger anchors into the holes. I only used two plungers because I used two screws to screw the bottom two holes that didn't line up correctly. Just a quick note, you could just use screws instead of the plungers. I found the screws to be much easier to work with, so keep that in mind. So the top is totally secure in these spots. I had to drill a new hole here, right here. Down here, there's no hole, so I'm gonna go ahead and drill one here. And I'll drill one over here as well. And I'm gonna put some screws in. Let's make sure the head is bigger than this opening, so we'll secure it. So I'll drill a small hole here and then screw it in for both of those. Okay, you can see we have two plungers up top and two screws at the bottom of the bracket. We will need more power outlets for this box, so let's add a surge protector to solve that issue. Use some double-sided tape to secure the surge protector. Pick a location and stick it. So throughout this video, you'll see me using twisty ties to bundle the power cords together. It's really important to keep these cords bundled and tucked away to make room for the devices. I decided to mount the ring power kit to the side of the network box. It frees up space. Now it's time to mount the devices on the bracket using the Velcro straps. Placement of these devices is tricky because you want to maximize the entire bracket. You don't want to waste any space and we have many devices to install on this bracket.
This was my first attempt to get all the devices onto the bracket. This configuration won't work. Let's move things around and see what will work. This configuration will work. My e-port switch will fit above the modem. However, the wireless router will not fit in this box. So change the plans for the wireless router. I'll plug the cloud's power supply into the surge protector as well as the switches. So now it's time to get these cables up and you're going to push them up into the wall here. Uh, I'm not going to cut these and terminate these, it would be a lot of work and I don't like doing that anyways. I'd rather just push this cable up from this wall. There's a lot of room up here, so I'm going to do that and then uh, make it look pretty. And then I'm going to plug the rest of these devices uh, down here and then here, wherever it'll fit. I'm going to take this wireless router and I'm going to mount it up here. It won't fit in here, obviously. We're almost done. Looking good. I just pushed the excess cords up into the wall cavity. And remember, hit subscribe. It's free. Looking good. All those wires are now out of the way. And here we have more cable management and just getting rid of these power cords, kind of bundle those together, make it nice and neat. Let's attach the wireless router to the wall above the network box. There are two holes measured at five and a quarter inches. Mark the spots on the wall and drill. Add two wall anchors and then two screws. Make sure the screws are sticking out about an eighth of an inch. The router will hang on those two screws. Plug in the power for the router and we're done. Now let's cut a hole to hide the wires behind the wall. I used a furniture grommet for the hole and traced around it with a pencil and then cut the drywall. I recommend using a drywall saw if you have one. It's much easier. When cutting the hole for the furniture grommet, less is best. You want to check frequently and see if it'll fit. If it doesn't, take out a little bit more. If you take out too much drywall, the furniture grommet will be loose. It won't be tight. Okay, let's see if it fits, and it does. Place the router back on the wall, and now it's time to drop the wires through the wall and into the network box. I used a string with a heavy bolt on the end. Once the bolt comes out at the bottom, tie a cable to the string and pull up. Easy. Do one cable at a time. It takes some patience, so take your time and go slowly. I have four Ethernet cables plus the power cord for the Wi-Fi router, so it took a little bit of time.
done. Now a quick vacuum of the drywall debris and it looks better already. Now here's the fun part. We want to make these wires look organized. So use velcro straps or twisty ties or even zip ties to bundle the cables together. I want to thank everyone for watching. So remember to give a thumbs up and share this video, it's really important. And hit the subscribe button, it's completely free. Thanks for watching. And we're done.